Mic check, mic check, 212. Brother Stu, do you copy? I copy, Peter. Mic check, 212. Two, I heard the 212 when I heard the mic check, brother. So that's a good sign. And it is a mighty fine Texas evening. And I think it's about that time in Texas for a little hand playing podcast action. What do you say? I agree, brother Peter. That time, all night. That time, that about that time. So, without further ado, Ham Planet Podcast, episode number eleven. One, in five, four, three, two, and one. Top of the morning, folks. Good afternoon and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Ham Planet Podcast. I'm your host. Peter Ham, and if you're new to the podcast, great to have you here. Good to see you. Hope you're having a great day, a great week, and, you know, stay a while, because you're in for a treat. We have a very, very good friend of mine as a featured guest tonight. He is also a former Baylor rugby captain, and a damn good one, too. He is also a, not too long ago, major league rugby player. And now he is the soon-to-be stallion of Houston real estate. He's the legend. He's my young buck. He's the big Stu. Stuart, how are we doing, brother? Doing good, brother Peter. Happy to be here, man. I appreciate you asking me to come on. Oh, you kn- you knew you were gonna be a guest from when we got her started. Well, I knew it. Yeah, I knew it. But I was waiting for the invite. How to how to get that? The old the old envelope. envelope. <laughs> it came in the mail yesterday. Came in the mail, brother. Came in the mail, and glad glad we RSVP'd because uh, it's gonna be the first of many podcasts for us, hopefully. Hopefully when I have a thousand, we've got a bunch of stew shows sprinkled on in, you know? Oh, I know, brother. Um, hopefully I can be on a couple more. I'm excited. I've been pumped to be on this for a while. I'm pumped. You're pumped. The people are pumped. You love to hear it. Let's get right into it, brother Stu. Brother, you're in the real estate game. You're learning a lot right now. It's an exciting thing. It's a it's a tough task. It's a lot to learn at once. I know that, especially with the company you're with. How's it been? How's the experience been? Man, it's been good. It it's been a tough experience. You know, um, went to school for real estate, did finance and real estate at Baylor, and so I always knew I'd get into it. It was kind of just a question of when and. Uh, I mean, you know, from sales jobs, like it, it's tough, but uh, it, you know, it's been, yeah, like, it's been a tough training. It's been like 10 weeks, 11 weeks of training. I'm about to keep be done with it and I'm excited to get activated. Um, hopefully I can start it with zooming and grooving in about a week or two. Oh yeah. But, I know you will. Yeah. It, it's been, it's been fun though. It's, it's been, been a lot. I like the guys I work with and, uh, guys I train with has been, have been cool and uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm hyped for you, brother. It's bell to bell. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Just like car sales. I'm doing spectacles off. Oh, we, we do, them, do them off? Oh. You know, I'll keep mine on a little bit. I, Come I like, on. I like the vibe. I love the vibe. I love the vibe. Okay, well now I'm putting mine back on. See two salesmen selling each other six shades. That's six, six shades of sales. You know, it would be great to be a sunglasses salesman, but you probably you wouldn't make that much, unfortunately. Not a lot of, you know. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of money in that, brother. A lot of a lot of competition. I think it can definitely be done. What about what do you think? Stew space goggles. 
new space got dude honestly if i could sell something like this or get on to like the whole hyper venoms or however whatever they call them i feel like there's tons pit, of bullshit on what kind of glass pit viper though is legit pit viper. that's it <laughs> i'm giving pit viper a shout out and hopefully you know they love to see it love to hear it but they're actually one of the ogs in the sunglasses game and they originally you know came out with their design and the style behind it which you know they were one of the first few companies that started selling insane you know glasses that were like a shield essentially and they were supposed to be a replacement for uh, ski goggles supposed to be like cool for ski goggles guys to just throw these on and hit the slopes dude i think we we're born in the wrong time well i think we need to be in the 80s rocking down the aspen slopes oh that would be wonderful <laughs> what a jolly right. time it was uh makes me think of uh riffraff Whenever I see those on you, I meet. I think immediately of Riff Raff, and all the shit oh, that he wears. Brother, I try not to go for Riff Raff. He's a he's hell of a guy, extremely talented, but a little rough on the edges, a little greasy. Yeah, yeah I think his music is shit too. <laughs> great, great name though. Brothers, too. Scrolling through the old questionnaire, you know, give me a few, give, give, a, give us a few talking points. And we are on a question right now that is, what is something you learned recently? Which, you know, there's a few answers on here that just kind of jump out at me. But yours is, you learned about the Tylenol murders of 1982. What are, what's the Tylenol murders? I'm intrigued. Dude, okay. So when you asked me that question, I was really trying to think of something I've learned and something that I thought was interesting with those. It's actually came from my favorite podcast, which is uh, Stuff You Should Know. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Um, they got like I thousands. Have. Yeah, I uh-huh. got thousands of random episodes of just random shit that people call in about. That. They'll do like 45 minutes talking about it. And the one that stuck out to me were the Tylenol murders. I think it took place in like wow. 1986 or something. 1982. And or you 82. got 82. Yeah, well, that's, that's probably right. Um, and you know, okay, do you know when you open like a pill bottle and they got that cotton in it? Yep. You know what? Do you know I why? That's that the, well, yeah. it's, uh, it's to maintain the freshness, apparently. See that—that's the bullshit. It actually doesn't. It—it it has nothing to do with the freshness. I never thought um, it did. No, it. I mean, yeah, I, I guess it could keep it dry, but this uh, sh- podcast. Is this that. supposed to be about the shakeability, though? That too, or it's you're yeah, not supposed I'm sure, to. I'm sure it has those. They're uses. trying to fool people, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I guess it. Ha- yeah, it makes you think that have. A, sense of security but really what it's about is to show that no one's really fucked with it because what happened in 1982 is this this someone went into a convenience store a drug store and took all these tylenol bottles and started putting cyanide cab taps inside these tylenol bottles it killed like it killed dozens of people all these random tylenol bottles that had cyanide in it (laughs) <laughs> wow. everyone started freaking out and so they started putting that cotton in there and put like a cover over it to make it so yeah it looked like tampered with it and that blew my fucking mind <laughs> so i was like that would blow my mind yeesh where was this was this was this in texas or no no i think it was in um like the northeast somewhere like new england i think it was I'm actually not, I don't remember exactly what city it happened in, but it happened in like three different towns. I know that. And it happened over a span of a couple of years and they never found the guy. They never found whoever did it. And it was just this crazy thing where all these people died by putting, someone just put cyanide in them and they don't know who did it. And uh, They still haven't caught the guy. 
No, this, yeah, like, like I said, it was the, in the 80s. They never knew about it and uh, thought that was a random fact that I learned last week when I was in my car driving to work. I was like, hey. that's unbelievable. I'm going to give it a quick, quick Google. Wow. Yeah, I'm reading about it right now. Potassium cyanide, lethal potassium cyanide. Seven people in Chicago area died. Copycats around the country caused several more deaths as well. Yeah, a, a couple guys, like some sick fucks, decided they're going to try to do it too, and started putting them into in different tiles. I'm laughing about it; it's terrible. But oh my god, yeah, there's a uh, there's an article on it. Yeah, yeah, and then they started. They moved to putting like the plastic covering on them too just to show that no one screwed with them. And it was wow. a weird, weird thing, man. Well, thinking twice now when I'm buying Tylenol, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's why I don't do Tylenol. <laughs> not a, Tylenol, any of those pain relievers, not good for the system. They're really not. I avoid them at all costs. Occasionally, you need one after maybe tequila night, but Jaeger night, Jaeger night hit differently, and it was like fuck. Now I need eat a fucking bowl of Tylenol to make myself feel better. Not a bowl. That's where that's where that's where things go wrong, brethren. <laughs> Don't want to hurt the liver. Liver's already injured. Oh, brother. Liver's healthy. Liver's healthy. Got to get the enzymes checked. It's a Hand Planet podcast reminder to go get your blood work. It's a smart thing to do, and it's the right thing to do. Brought to you by Quest Diagnostics. We're working on a, working on a, a partnership with Quest Diagnostics. Great company. I've never heard of them. They're just like a place where you can get all types of health tests done. Great place. Anyways, brother, how's H Town? You mean H way through the H Town? The country, yeah. the city. Yeah, H Town's good. You know, born and raised here. Uh, moved back here a couple months ago. Uh, like you and I went to Baylor together and then I moved to Austin and I was playing rugby in Austin and uh, I was there a couple months. And then uh, when the Rona hit, I moved back home here to Houston and uh, just recently moved in with uh, my best friend, Chris, actually, who's sitting Shout out before. Chris. Shout out Chris. Shout out Love Chris. That. He's hanging out. Yeah. And then uh, my landlord, other rugby teammate that we share, Mr. Oh. Ben. Oh, landlord Big Ben. Yeah, landlord Big Ben, who's uh, – he's moving and grooving as well. And uh, so we're living in a place together. So, I mean, I love H-Town. It, everyone can shit on it, especially you, Peter, from Dallas. Oh, I mean, I I love Houston. I got nothing against Houston. Had a great, great time every time I've been. But H-Town's fun. Have no complaints. I love the 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 Morris Fortress. More like the Morris Barnyard, man. It's a, yeah. I mean, a fortress yeah. fortress is suitable. Yeah, got every animal you can imagine or used to running around that place. Speaking of that, uh, how's my good friend Wee Wee? Wee Wee, the pig Wee Wee is great. She is fat as ever, living her best life. Uh, yeah, we we is running around the yard eating acorns, still moving and grooving, eating acorns again. Unfortunate. Yeah, she's moving slowly, <laughs> but <laughs> she's good. Wee wee's happy. Uh, I actually saw her earlier today when I went by the house, and she just she sl- she'll pick a place, man, and she'll sleep there for ten hours, and you don't even know where she is. So, but yeah, good. when last time I was there, she was sleeping like under this burrow by a bush and we were just like hey we we you having a good nap and she oinked at us a few times 
How old is dude, she? Dude, I don't know. I think I, my sister got her when I was like in fifth grade. So supposed to be a mini pig. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to everyone who um, buys a teacup potbelly pig. That is a lie. They don't, don't exist. Do it. They don't, don't do it. That, that is a waste on your wallet and your dreams because they do not stay this size. They do not. She's probably the size of this table I am sitting at right now. And fun fact about Wee Wee, she actually just bit my buddy Chris actually a couple days ago when we were at dinner at my parents' place. So there, but <laughs> she she's a good pig. Wee-wee. But don't go buy don't yeah, she she bites. Biting pig that was supposed to be small, but still love her. Yeah, love her. She best she's always out. nice to me. Yeah, I, she sits. What did Chris do? Uh, pet her. Do was he Chris, just petting her and wee wee snap back? No. He, I don't know. It's funny thing about Chris is just all my animals have always disliked him for some reason, except my dogs. And this is just one of the. That's kind of the opposite. Your, your dogs are, they're scared of you. Well, but Peter, that's your other stop. animals are friendly. Peter, that's because you're the size of a refrigerator. A really, but you know, uh, a a unit refrigerator, not a new, not, um, a good refrigerator. Yeah, good. You know, it's very symmetrical. If a if a refrigerator, you know, had a baby with Arnold Schwarzenegger, huh. and then ruin a ribeye steak, that'd be you. I love that. That's one of the nicest things I've been told in all of September. And yeah. And August. Actually, it was my birthday in August, so. <laughs> but wow. That that's touching, brother, honestly. You're welcome. I should Great. put that on a pop and send it to you. You know I love you know I'd love that. I'll take it if you do it. Brothers Two, we're looking at the three things that have occurred in your life that change the course of your life or change your perspective and or change the way you think. First off, was that question confusing? What are the three things that occurred in your life that changed the course of your life slash change your perspective and or change the way you think? No, it wasn't a tough question. It wasn't confusing, but it definitely was a head scratcher. I'm trying to think of fucking three things that made me change the way I think or change my life in a significant way in my 23 years. But um, I came up with a couple. It's one of my favorite staffs, people. Yeah, there, there's been a couple things I'm sure that have changed the way I think. For sure. Maybe not. Traveling, more. traveling to New Zealand, that's always one that I love. Yeah. What's that like, man? Like, I've never been to any of the, uh, the islands. I want to. I know it's the rugby kingdom. And you were there. Um, you were in it. Yeah. I was in the thick of it, man. Um the so as you know, yeah, as you know, you know, I went for rugby from Baylor sent me there. The team did. Nice Which is a great, to... great thing from Baylor rugby program. Yeah, that was when I mean, we started taking it to the next level. It's very true. I was honored to go. And, uh, you know, tons of people have been to New Zealand, so it's nothing you know, super crazy. But for me. Um, Not tons of people. Yeah. A healthy There's... amount. There's some there's some globe trotters out there that probably been there tons of times, but for me, you know, I went for rugby and uh, I was there. I think I was there a better part of a summer, like two and a half months, uh, my freshman year summer at Baylor, and uh, I went stayed with a foster family and I went to the um, Auckland Rugby Academy up on the main island and. Uh, you know, when people think of New Zealand, they think of, you know, the Hobbit holes and um, where they film Lord of the Rings and, yep. you know, crazy skydiving. 
and uh, really good hiking and which is true that all happens but that mostly happens yeah. in the they did a park. Jurassic Park I think too yeah and Jurassic there's tons of movies that have been filmed there so and uh, <laughs> and you know it it was a good time I went it was rough I was in the thick of it for rugby you know I I live breathed ate and slept and shit rugby like that is all I did and uh, you were getting was, better though at an accelerated rate oh yeah you know the, I definitely when I came back from there I was a different player and I I guess getting into the main question is like well, how did it impact me is um, yeah. you're in a different country and on a different part of the planet like it was a 16 hour flight and um, you know everyone there just thinks very different coming from Texas, you know, yeah. I guess Kiwis aren't very different from Texans except, you know, they're extremely sarcastic, but they're some of the best people that you could ever meet. Um, a lot of the Kiwi, the family I live with were, were the nicest people I could ever met, but they, they like to fuck with you. They like to, they like to mess with you. They, but that, that means they like you. If they're screwing with you all the time, that means they like you. So that can be a little, you know. I love – I love I, – every Aussie I've met or every New Zealander, Islander, and Aussie I've met, they've always been a, just hell of a guy. Yeah, they're similar people. And they, they, they're do fun. Fun. They, do fuck, they do fuck with you. But it's like in a way that's like uh, – it's different from anything weird. Yeah. Anything, it, it, anything Texan, it's very different. Yeah, it, it made it made you have some tough skin for sure. <laughs> Gotta have tough skin for rugby in general. Dude, that, that first week when you're, you know, I went with Parker, um, Parker Vincent, who we both played with at Baylor, great yeah. guy. One and, of our uh, one of our brothers. And you know that first week, I. I was like, God, I'm shit at rugby. Um, you know, I hate the people here. Everyone, everyone, like, I'm not good in all this shit. But it, after the first week, it was fantastic. You, you loosen the goose. Yeah. You found and, your goose step. <laughs> I found my goose step, uh, figuratively and uh, physically. But, you know, hey, hey, hey brother. I love the goose Hey, brother, I think we got to take a break real quick because... Uh, quick break, Arushi. Here we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's your good friend, Commercial Break, Peter. Checking on in, hoping you're having a splendid evening. Here to remind you that this episode is brought to you by water. Drink it. It's good for you. Two gallons if you can. All right, and we're back in action, brother Stu. Cheers to you, brother. Cheers, brother. Oh, a little ranch water. Big fan of the ranch water, Peter. Fan of the spicy variety. I'm doing the slip of the shades. Yeah, it might be time to shades off. Woo. Can actually see now. We got the halo shield off. What did you say? Did you play Halo? Brother, I lived by Halo. Okay, good. Everyone. Uh, it was like the first video game I played. Yep, and same. I feel like I can still hear the theme song in my head. It's like, oh, come on. Spot you know on. I, oh, I know yeah. it. Of course. Everyone knows it. If you don't know it, you don't know your Halo. It makes me think of that video of all those middle schoolers inside a bathroom, and they were all singing that, like an acapella of that. Good video. Shout out to Vine. I miss it. Vine. Wow. Shit really hit the fan with them. Yeah, made no sense. Vine. They were I, doing good, you know? Yeah, they never came out with a Vine 2 either. That was a disappointment. And I was one of those people, you know, I didn't make Vines, but I had a Vine so I could watch Vines. And, but you, you consumed. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I was a consumer as well. By far. Always have been a consumer. Vine was great. Got to give him credit. Got to give him credit where credit's due. Facts. Brother Stu, three people that inspire you are your father, of course, The Rock, and Nick Bear. Run us through that list because I like all of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you put your dad, I feel like not everybody, but most people, you know, I had a good, I have a great dad and look up to him. You do? You have a, and, I love your dad. He's a legend. Uh, Hard Lord. worker. Old sets the stand sets the standard high. Oh yeah. He I guess my dad inspires me just because, you know, growing up as a kid I thought he was the coolest dude around. And uh I that guy has done I think everything on the planet. I think most people think their dad has. And I mean that he's a pilot, uh ran his company. He's a rancher, he spends probably four days a week at the at the ranch. Um, yep. Yeah, probably one of the smartest guys I know. You know, absolutely agree. Was a ski bum at some point, big water skier at some Ru- point. Rugby manimal. Yeah, I played rugby for thirty years. Got me into it. Um, thirty years. More than thirty years. I'm, I think it was like thirty-five years he played. That's great. Yeah, I can he. He still will play in his alumni games every once in a while. Like, the man just does not stop. So, biggest thing that inspires me about him is he just doesn't stop. That guy is always going, um, which can be frustrating because it's like the guy can't sit and, like, watch a football game. But he always has to go, like, mess with something. But great guy. You know what? My dad's dad's the same way. He's got to be doing some sort of – work or building something or fixing up something, you know, in the shop. Yeah. He's just like, Dad, what are you doing? He's like, oh, you know, just get some work done. You got to love it. Yeah, it's inspiring. Thing. But to him, it's just like, you know, you stop working, you die, which is a really cynical way to look at things. But – Honestly, you got to enjoy yourself every now and then. Yeah, facts. But, it, it, you know, I respect it a lot because, you know. I respect it, too. And then the next one, The Rock. I mean, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Uh, it's hard not to admire that guy. One, he's a unit. Peter, you're a unit. I, I like to think I'm a unit. Yep. We're both. We're, and both, the, uh, we're in the unit, uh, you know, familiar. Right, we're f- frequent uh, goers and studiers of the meat factory, the Iron Chapel. Very frequent, as frequent as we possibly can. Makes right. you a better, bit better, stronger man. Right, and when it comes to lifting weights and picking heavy things up and putting them back down again, I think the Rock is like the epitome of that, and. Uh, also, it's a good came from nothing story. I mean, guy didn't really have much, didn't have much money to his name. Love his story. Uh, I, I was, watched that. Spe- I watched that speech today. Yeah, um, gets me fired up every single time. Dude, and what? I mean, he plays every role. I mean, this not every role, but the same role in every movie. Just like yeah, he's a rock. He's a rock. He plays the rock. He plays himself, and. He's funny too. That's like that's the dream, you know. You just, right. you're you, but you're a character, and like, you know, the big beef is the big beef in every single movie. It's like Will Ferrell also has that. Yeah, it's the same as Will Ferrell. He's just the rock. Will Ferrell's always Will Ferrell. Yeah. Who it's, else is like that? It's a came from nothing story. Didn't have much money. He played college football. Then, you know, back then in the WWE, it was a, like, it still is, but back then especially, like, it was, oh, it was huge. It was, it was huge, but it was brutal. You oh, know? yeah. No. Oh, it, it was, it was dirty back then. Yeah, it's dirty as hell. Like, you, you don't get anything if you're not, not one of the top guys. So to build yourself up like that and, 
you know, to be the champ, you know, I don't know how that process really is it, but it, from what I understand it, it tough and, you know, you don't, you don't fucking get any favors while you're doing it. So big fan. Then he became an actor and then he's like a fitness influencer. I follow him everywhere on Instagram and he does a bunch of different YouTube videos and he has multiple shows. He just bought the XFL, you know, it, it's insane. The guy's crushing it. And he's so and he motivates others to do so too, which is right. The, one of the best things to do. Funny as fuck too. That just the icing on the cake. Yeah. And then so hilarious. Then uh, Nick, Nick Bear. Yeah, Nick. I don't know if you know Nick Bear. Uh, he's the founder of BPN Nutrition. Um. Bear, yeah, uh, I think we talked uh, about it before. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I came across him a couple of years ago. He was a he was a ranger, army ranger, and um, then you know after he was done with his service, he started his nutrition company. And uh, I love all his supplements, and I use them all right still right now. Um, I, Absolutely. I used to, his workout programming and uh, now he's a big Iron Man guy. He's done a couple, he's done, I think two Iron Man's now, a bunch of uh, other marathons. So he's just moved from different things. And uh, he came out with a book too. And he has a new, you know, thing coming out, which is just go one more and uh, big fan of him. Just absolute unit. Also. I'm a fan. I'm a fan now too. I'm a full blown fan. Yeah. Sounds like a great man. I haven't read his book yet, but uh, he's got a book out. Yeah, I forgot the name of it, but he was advertising for it. He actually came to speak at Baylor a couple of months ago or last year. Is he a Baylor guy? No, he's not. But he talked in the entrepreneurship class. Ah, that's great. Class. And uh, dude, the, his company's doing well. It's like in Round Rock in Austin. And, You'll love to hear it. You got to respect the units. Glad he's glad he's uh, coming to visit Baylor Entrepreneurship Program. Yeah. That's the type of that's the type of people they need in there. You know, you did entrepreneurship too. I did. I did. Dude, you know? they they had Grant Cardone come to Baylor. Did you know oh, that? They did. I think I didn't. I missed that lecture. Oh, Sue, that would have been that would have been amazing to go to. Mm. Yeah, it's it's impressive that people are getting Baylor money, man. They're just throwing it out. I hope I hope you know they're giving me a call in a couple of years. We'll be called up there one day, Peter. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping in a few more years. Yeah, you know, I'm sure there'll be quite a few Baylor people interested in, you know, the digital sphere. Mm-hmm. I can come talk about that. Come talk about podcasting. I'll probably have a couple hundo episodes by then. Who knows? Yeah, this is one of your first ones. Get Getting a couple under the belt. We're at 11, which is a good start. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember number one. I was just kind of like, all right, let's just give it a shot, brother. I don't know what we're doing because I did it with Chris, but I'm just going to click record and I'll f- try and figure it out, figure out how to get it on Spotify and YouTube and Apple Music and transfer the audio and stuff. And here we are, number 11, with another legend. On to the next one, brother. Hell yes. Rogan has over 15 hunch. I feel like Rogan's just like the epitome of oh, he, Well, he is. I mean, he's got just got a $100 million contract or $300 million or something. I don't even know. Massive from Spotify. Oof. Dude, a mad, like, I think that's crazy. A $100 million contract I think it was more than that. I think it was like three hundred million. 
It, it could be, but do even so, you sit in front of a camera for your. I mean, yeah, he's done tons of other things, you know, with the UFC, and you know he's. He's a he, he's a shows showsman. Yeah, he's an influencer in many ways. I'm, he is sponsored by tons of different products, but either way, like hundred million dollars, couple hundred million dollars for sitting in front of a camera talking about interesting topics with cool people. Can't imagine a better job. You know what? It's a damn good job. Hopefully, hopefully we can get there, brother. We'll see. We'll get there, brother. One episode at a time. One legend at a time. All right, brothers, too. Another thing I wanted to touch on. So, one of your favorite songs, also one of mine, is One of These Nights, The Eagles. By The Eagles, man. The Eagles are timeless. One of my favorites. I'll sing every word to it every time I hear it. Uh, I'll be right there with you, brother. Uh, anyone that knows me will play that song, and I will fucking sing it. I know you will. With uh, we've sang it facts. together many times. Facts. Pretty sure you played that song on our uh, like first trip together to our first rugby game was between you, you and me, and Cody when we were in uh, your challenge, challenger going to play some team. Oh play- yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, me as a scared, skinny freshman sitting in the back just being like, I don't even know what these fucking guys are doing. That's great. You, you, know, Cody, you, were, the- you know you were in good hands. I don't know. I was scared I wasn't even going to make it to the game. No, you weren't. <laughs> yeah, dude. I can you and Cody yelling at each other, trying to figure out how to get your Bluetooth to work by trying to say, okay, if we – Press this button. How in how many ways can we say Bluetooth audio that was, without? That was Cody's idea, and it was pissing me off. I remember <laughs> Bluetooth. Was, yeah, yeah. That one would that one would work, but Cody would be like smart tent audio and like weird shit. <laughs> and I'd be like Cody, just let it connect. And. You know, we came up short with many variations of it, but it was pretty funny. Gosh, a chally, backseat. Props to you Peter, for sending in it, brother. I don't even, yeah, I don't even know how you fit in that car, Peter. Oh, I fit, in the, I fit in the front seat very comfortably. I still, like, fucking, like I it said. It was still tight. It was still tight, though. Oh, this is like a this tiny ass car you'd crawl into. <laughs> I mean, a, a Chali is an American muscle car, or at yeah. least it was. It's still trying to, you know, live that life. But yeah, I like the I like the caddy. I prefer the caddy. Caddy, 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 caddy. It was a Cat, good car. Caddy nation, brother. Still going strong. Brothers who, gosh, those Tylenol murders were insane. You're still thinking about those. Isn't that weird? Fucking people putting cyanide in Tylenol. God. That's interesting. Anyone listening to this, look that up. It blows your fucking mind. I did. Oh, yeah. Please do look it up. They've got a, well, New York Times had a whole thing about it like two years ago. Well, we're still talking about it today. Keep your eyes peeled on that Tylenol, ladies and gents. All right, so one of my favorite questions was, what do you want your legacy to be? Which is a good, which is a good intimate question to know about, you know, a brother, a good friend. And I love to hear everyone's answers. And yours was nothing short of great. Stu wants his legacy to be. I'll I'll read it. I'll give it. it. Yeah, you can read it. 
I want people to remember me as the guy who took life by the balls and ran with it. Someone who has things thrown at them and just makes a way if you can't find a way. Also someone who leaves by example and was a lifelong unit. Someone who goes out of his way for others. Love to hear it, brother. Yeah, brother. It, I mean, yeah, we got a little deep with that question. But, yeah, if I wanted someone to remember me. It's a good question know, to know the answer to. Yeah, man, if you can't find a way, make a way, you know. It, there's no simple, you know, resolution. If there's no um, simple outcome, then – and you can't find one, it, just make one. Like, make it for yourself. And um, so – and when you get shit thrown at you, you get stuff thrown at you, you just, you know, you just take it and you run with it and you just try to see if how you can turn that to your advantage in any yep. way possible. And, and there's and, always a way to, there's always positive. Yeah. You know, even if there might not be an ideal outcome, not a, like a positive outcome that you know, ends with you on top, there's something to take out of it when in the next situation, you know, you turn that around, flip it on its head, and you end up on top. So, it, I would agree be, more of that. Yeah, if I'd be remembered for something like that, that's what I would choose. And then, you know, a lifelong unit, Peter, I will give you all the credit in to say that when I came into college, you know, I was, I, I'm not saying I wasn't a unit, but I was a uh, young, skinny a young buckaroo young buckaroo that didn't know anything and uh you easily introduced me to the iron chapel the meat factory if you will and it's a good helped, place help me start my my long journey as a lifelong unit to just be fit you know i appreciate That's, that brother it's an honor yeah i want to be 60 years old and still be like good shape wow you know, Stuart the Force, Stuart the Fist's girlfriend or yep. boyfriend. What a boyfriend. God, I don't even know what I'm saying. Stuart the Fist's grandfather. Yeah. Yo, you, you got what I'm saying. He's still, yeah, I got you. He's still stacked, even at his age. Yeah, I want to be the same way. I want to be the, I want to be the dad and the grandpa that's just like old, old Papa Pete. Dude, you got you to gotta be the Dilf. You got you to gotta be Dilf life, man. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we just – we stay working hard, brother. We stay working hard. Working hard. What do we think about the uh, old Clark Kent's? <laughs> man, you got a Superman costume under that shirt? I wish. Need a little bit more gains before. Or you can rip it off. Yeah. <laughs> Same. I don't want to, you know, this is my other armor shirt, brother. Can't be ripping these up. Good shirt. Don't rip it. Brother, love the legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, if there was a documentary movie about Stu, the title of it would be Stu, The Good, The Bad, and The Beef. Coming out October 9th to a theater near you. Watch it. Or we got beef. You got beef. <laughs> Yeah, that, you that don't want my, no beef. If I chose one, it would be that. You ever seen The Good, The Bad, The Ugly? Clint Eastwood? Oh, yeah. West? Of course. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah, I mean, like myself, you are a beef lover. You you love eating fucking beef. You know? Today was one of the few days that I did not eat beef. Mm. You hate to see it, Peter. Well, you know, you do. I had 
I did have chicken, a lot of chicken. Today was a big chicken, chicken and smoothie day. Mm, I got you. We we have those days. Uh, today was a chicken day for me. I definitely ate a lot of a lot of uh, yard bird, but um, yard bird, yard bird, but <laughs> yard bird. What's a what's a get a can I get a good Texan definition on yard bird? A yard bird. I just when I think of yard bird, I, a yard bird is what you call like a like a uh, a dove, a pheasant, a quail. Like that's kind of like a hunting term, kind of making fun of birds. It's a yard bird. A yard so bird. A, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, easy kill. Like, ado- easy kill. You're um, yeah. Adopt- oh, this is the old yard bird. It ain't an ostrich. No, <laughs> sound a fucking outback bird ostrich that's taller than you that wants to kill you that's you don't want to get pecked by one of those bastards have you ever uh been next to an ostrich how tall those things are i have they're huge they're huge i've always wanted to go to an ostrich race I don't know if it's safe to be around those things. Probably not, man. I don't think we're meant to ride them. That's for sure. Oh, we're definitely not meant to ride them. Those people... (sighs) Over my head. Mm -hmm. I ain't fitting on one of those. Brother Stu, how was your experience as the Baylor rugby captain? And what did you learn from it? Um, good question. Uh, it you know, one a prestigious thing, role. It was a prestigious a role. Great, was, a great role. I was honored to have it. Uh, you know, it was it was a tough follow up to follow you, Peter, um, and follow Cody before you. It. Oh yeah, it's a it's a torch. Yeah it. It it was the torch was passed, but it was a great experience. You know, I'm a little yeah. different from. I'm not extremely vocal as you were, but you know, it yeah, it was, experience. and especially coming off the year that you and I had, your lot your senior year as a captain, uh, when we went to nationals, and uh, you know we had a great comp- team that year. Yeah, the team was brutal. We bunch of units out there just smacking heads. We did have quite the mean squad. Yeah, that that squad was beefy. It was mean. And they did. They gave no shits about anything. We were intense. We were a team. We were. We were one of the tightest knit brotherhoods that I've ever been a part of. That best job I ever had. Best job I ever had. Best job I ever had. I mean, um, it was like anyone on the team would lay it on the line for any other guy out there. Yeah. It, I loved it. Yeah. The, it. The, the, yeah, I miss it every day. The experience of it was fantastic. Good leadership experience. It definitely started out slower with me because I just – I'm not as – like I said, I'm not very as vocal as you were. I was more of like a lead by example uh, to put it Absolutely. In, put it as Which is a great as, way to do things too. Like I would do the thing that I thought was right and uh, just, you know, if someone wasn't getting their shit together, if someone wasn't following it, I was going to do it the right way. And once they, you know, whatever, if the drill, the game, yep. anything – and they would learn their lesson just because we'd all have to run. So it, either way, it, I had a, I had a great time doing it. Met some great people, made lifelong friends. Um, many, many lifelong friends. Yeah, we we had our losses, we had our wins. You know, my uh, my junior year, I think, was no my, um, yeah, no my junior year is when I became captain. Yeah. After, and um, you know, had had two years of it, and uh, all I can say about it, man, is the best time of my life. And, oh yeah, uh, I miss the team, miss the guys. 
We need a strong year out of them this year. Dude, I want the alumni game. Oh, yeah. We're going to make it happen. Yeah, first alumni game for me. Oh, isn't that coming up? Or I know no, we I postponed think, it. I think it's in the spring because of Corona. Ah. All right, well. That ain't good for them. That's more time to get huge. More time yeah. to get rugby rugby ready. Yeah, more time for me to get in shape to get back out there and run against those the young'uns. I'm going to throw them around like – Weak sauce. Peter, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. One of my favorite memories of you was just at like you were such a cheap bastard in some parts. At what? The alumni game? <laughs> no, no, not the alumni game. Like just seeing you at the bottom of those rucks fucking twisting somebody's ankle. <laughs> oh, oh, in a in a well in a in a real game. Oh well you know that was only against uh, specific teams that had fucking tried to do the same shit to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I don't care. I'm glad you did it. I thought it was funny. Hey, you know what? In rugby, you have to use jujitsu. You got to use wrestling tactics. They ain't always pretty. I'll tell you that. It ain't. But it gets the job done. <laughs> that, that's very true. Oh my god! Might might snap an ankle or snap a finger, but you get, <laughs> you're you're getting out of there. You're getting out. Yeah, no doubt about that. My uh, rugby coach, Knowlton. You know Knowlton. Yeah. He, uh, yep, yeah, from Culver. He he taught us like a lot of jujitsu style moves to use, like in malls and rocks, and still use all of it still today. Yeah, when I when I was playing for Austin with the Gilgronies, we um, it was like either once a week. Yeah, it was once a week during the off season. We uh, we went to a jujitsu. Um, I guess a jujitsu class, and yeah. we did and we did very similar uh, lessons. I learn mean, how the learn how the body kind of just contours. best way to yeah best way to maneuver to get someone on the ground. Yep. Take and if you got them on the ground and you know what you're doing, you just kind of take control. Pretty intimidating, man. Going into one of those things, you're just like, I think they called it a wasn't a dojo but yeah they've oh yeah yeah like yeah my man. old my old roommate clay is doing it and that's he's like it's intense yeah he's like he went in there one day you know like after a long day of work just kind of planning to go in and you know get get a few rolls in and then <laughs> there was like a massive guy who was there was like yeah, I'll, I'll get. I'll give it a few goes with you, and it, he was, he was good. He was good. Mm-hmm. Well, Stu, I think it's about a very special time, and as per tradition, the Ham Plant Podcast. Would you rather's? Mm. And. We're getting them fired up because this is a legendary part of the podcast. And you know what, Sue? I know you love Would You Rathers. I am a fan of these. But these might get a little intense. They might get a little insane. They might get a little crazy. They might get a little goofy. Who knows? But what I do know is you still got to answer. And everything outside the question, up for interpretation. Okay. And I'll answer too as a supporting questionnaire. 
All right, brother. Would you rather lose all your money and valuables or all the pictures you've ever taken in your life? Damn. Uh, that's tough. I have some pretty valuable pictures. Um, honestly, I probably want to lose all my pictures because yeah, you know, it really depends. I'm a sentimental guy. You know, I love my pictures and my memories, especially like ones with my family, ones with me and my girlfriend, ones with just a lot of things. But uh, I feel like if I lost all my money and all my valuables and, you know, I have to start from square one, it would be really hard to make those memories again. So, and then again, I also don't take a lot of pictures. I really don't. I, I'm, yeah. trying to get, I'm trying to get better at that, kind of make more memories. Oh, yeah. So I'd probably lose all my pictures, keep all my money <laughs> and my valuables. Respect. What about you? Damn, brother. I'd honestly go. <sighs> Damn. They say money isn't everything, but. I honestly, you know. I, I'd give the money. I, I take a lot of pictures and videos, brother. Yeah. I think it definitely depends on if you take a lot of photos and you take a lot of pictures. I don't know. I'm just thinking about some of the ones that I have that if I lost them, what I would feel like. Right. There's a few of those that I think about that you and I have. Mm -hmm. I want to be you and Cody on the couch. Ooh, and Jono. <laughs> and Jono. Oh, God. Yeah. That yeah. one would be tough to lose. The yeah, one of that. me, I got one of me touching the Culver Gate when I graduated, the Iron Gate. Mm -hmm. That'd be tough to lose. And then I got some good picks with Hattie. That would be tough to lose. We got right. some goop, cute ones, goofy ones, good, good ones. I think I still get to keep my car, though, if I choose that one. Uh, is a car was, is a car valuable? Yeah, I think that. Huh. Uh, I don't know. You know, I have no idea if you can keep your car. If you value your car, I guess it's it's outside. It's, it's up for interpretation. I feel like if you value a car, that means they're throwing it out the window. I agree. All right, Stu. Would you rather – another deep one. Would you rather be transported permanently 500 years into the future or 500 years into the past? Uh, transported permanently. Okay. If I'm going 500 years in the past, I'm in like late 1400s, 1500s. Um, there's some crazy shit happening back then. It wasn't pretty. It was not pretty. I, I Christopher Columbus times, which yeah, not pretty. Yeah, both were not sanitary. Those those wars that happened were not like the shit that happens today. It was swords. It was spears. It was, you know, medieval shit. Yeah, I like uh, – that's tough. I'd probably go to the future, honestly. I'd probably go to the future. But yeah. but uh, fighting with swords, I mean, dude, that was intense. I mean, you, you live or die by the sword back then, literally. So – I um I don't that know is, be, that, is that better or worse? It'd be interesting, I don't, you know. I don't know. I feel like it's more memorable. <laughs> well, <laughs> it definitely fucking hurts more. Yeah, <laughs> it fucking hurts more. I don't know, man. Uh that's tough. I mean, what kind of drugs are we talking back then? <laughs> I don't think they I, had shit. 
You know, well, they had, you know, I think they had alcohol. To, yeah, they definitely trying, had alcohol. I'm trying to think of something that would, like, cope more <laughs> with being back then. I don't know. I, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd pick the future, future for sure. I'm, I'm not dealing with, you know, the Black Death. And Black Plague. Black Plague, Monty Python. Yeah, uh, all, the, all that. Swords. Dragons. You know, I, I, I'm doing 500. 500 in the future. 500 in the future. 500 in the future. Yeah, you're, you're right. If it was if 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 it was 300, 300, 300, I might take the uh, yeah the past because that was kind of a things were. You know, you, you you had some kind of things popping off. Seventeen twenties. That was America was kind of. I mean, they had guns back then in the uh, like back in the fifteen hundreds. I think. Oh, the guns were rough. <laughs> it's fucking shoot bad. off and might shoot backwards. <laughs> yeah, you don't know where that is. get hit by a cannonball. You're done. You gotta put the put the gunpowder in. Dude. <laughs> oh my god, I'm trying just being a soldier back then had to be tough. That's just what I think about back then. It's probably because we just go through history class and we just think of what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Hell of a I'd, question. Just three hundred be different. I'd I'd uh I'd talk I'd entertain that. Going back in the three hundred years back. Fair enough, brother. Fair enough. All right, brother. Would you rather have a clown only? Hold on. Let me let me analyze this question. It's kind of long. Did you say a clown? Yeah. Cl- Man, I don't like clowns. Why are we bringing clowns into this? Oh, okay. <laughs> Jeez. This is a crazy. One. <laughs> It's interesting though. You know, the, you know that the best would you rather's are you know intense. So here we go. Big beef stew. Would you rather have a clown only you can see that follows you everywhere and just stands silently in a corner watching you without doing or saying anything? Or have a real life stalker who dresses like the Easter Bunny that everyone can see. Dude, honestly, I'd take the fucking Easter Bunny. I'm taking the bunny, dude. Get the clown away. <laughs> no, at least everyone sees the bunny. And I feel like oh. you can screw with him. I would and... be I would be fucking with him all the time. Yeah, I feel like I could, I could, like, okay, wait, is this like a dangerous stalker or this is just a bunny that follows you or a person dressed as a bunny? Like, they're, are they harmless? It's outside of the, it's outside of the question for interpretation. So it okay. says, it says, or have a real life stalker who dresses like the Easter bunny that everyone can see. Okay. Yeah. I'd still take that. I'd take the bunny. I'm taking the bunny. I feel yeah. like I'd be like a schizophrenic with the clown thing. No, man. You ever seen it? <laughs> I no. honestly haven't seen it. Is that what happens? D- oh, I know, yes. I know, I know it is a clown, but it's like, the- yes, it, it kills the people. It's like following or the people that, Oh they- shit. So yep, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a scary movie guy. You know that. Early. Yeah, it um, and for me, I think it's funny because I feel like I could dress up as like what's his face from Looney Tunes and run around being like I'm hunting rabbits, and I could like go rabbit hunting. Essentially, I'm not gonna have a clown sitting in the corner while I sleep, nope. making balloons and nope. Honk. You're freaking me out. No. Nope. Uh-huh. Nope. I don't do I don't do clowns either. No, I don't screw with clowns. Nah. That's why I honestly McDonald's 
ain't up my alley because of the, the whole clown thing. That's well, Ronald McDonald running around. Ronald, not I don't know about him. Mm. Have you ever been to a circus, Peter? Um, I haven't. I no, I don't think I have. Aren't they essentially criminal now? They don't really have circuses. I mean, they do it's have circuses. Gre- but- it's greasy. They throw a giraffe and an elephant and like a shit man. From, and- yeah, from what I understand, they don't – like they have I – mean, they're circuses. Like, you know, you can see people on – I the bet they sell huge ones. Yeah, but there's no animals. There's no – I mean, there's animals, but it's not like you don't see elephants and – tigers and all this crazy stuff with animals doing things like that that the what we think of a circus like the stereotype that doesn't exist anymore yeah with the you know 10 foot tall cotton candy and the you know the yeah. whack-a-mole and well i mean they might have the whack-a-mole whack-a-mole's good game mm. all right so next question would you rather blink twice the normal rate or not be able to blink for five minutes but then have to close your eyes for 10 seconds every five minutes? Trying to blink really quick to see which one I'd prefer. Either, either way, whoever you're talking to, it's going to be awkward. You're kind of unusual. You probably got to tell open. someone. <laughs> I'd have to tell – okay, I have this condition. Uh, I, got, I got a blinking thing. Just, just, <laughs> don't, blinking work, just don't worry it. about it. I just, blink, just ignore my blinking. Honestly, I'd probably say keep my eyes open for five minutes and then shut them for ten seconds. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I don't even feel blinking though, but like 10 seconds, that's like. Now I can't stop blinking. You know, that's a, well, can, that's a goofy can, one. Yeah, if I'm going to have a five minute conversation with somebody, I'm going to go, okay, hey, you know, I'm going to keep my eyes open, but I hope you know, like the end of five minutes. I'm going to have to keep my eyes closed, so just don't be alarmed. Yeah. I feel like it's easier to say. Keep an, eye, me- keep an eye out for me. It'd be tough for, like, rugby. Yeah, imagine running around and keeping your eyes closed for 10 seconds. Yeah, 10 seconds in rugby, that's a lot. I don't even know what you do. Do you take a knee? You get smacked with a ball? I don't know. What if you're getting past the ball and it's five minutes, one minute left in the game? What are you doing in that scenario? Yeah, I don't know. That... Running around with your eyes closed for 10 seconds, that'd be tough. I can't I no do idea it. where I'm going. I'm doing the – I'm taking the blink. Blink. Double blink. Double blink. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right, so next one. We got some good ones on tap tonight, so why not? Would you rather have plants grow at 20 times their normal rate when you're near them? Just like, I don't know, Medusa. Or I don't know if that's her superpower. She turns people to stone. Anyways. That's not it. Maybe the green Jack of the Beanstalk or one of the green goddesses. I don't know. Maybe that's what happened with Snoop Dogg. Or for people and animals to stop aging when you are near them. So just when you're near them, they don't age? That's what it says, brother. So plants that grow really quickly. They grow 20 times their normal rate. Okay. Or... Animals not aging when you're around them. Animals not aging when you're around them. When you are near, um, no. Yeah, for animals to stop aging when you are near them. 
It depends. What if you have a dog that's just annoying as hell and you don't – I guess that's terrible to think about. <laughs> uh, yeah, animals. You know, I, I'd stick with the animals. You know, I, I love my dog. I would do and, the animals too. Yeah, you know, I, I could care less if um, my flower – If you're a farmer though. If you're a farmer yeah. though, you would be just walking around at night just – Fucking, you know you got that advantage. Oh yeah, I'm gonna plant my corn and it's gonna grow in two days. You know that? I'll I'll take that if I was a farmer. But yeah, because no. think about the time fun. where your dog is like kind of by itself while you're working or doing whatever. I just think about like, wow, I would have so much time to be doing rocky stuff. You know, if I could just, when I was with him, he like just, or near him. I'm near him a lot, but I'm not like, right. Not 24 7, like, Rafi, what's good? I don't want to get him fired up right now, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying. We're yeah, on anim- animals all the way, Hundo P. Yeah, no one, no one screw with my animals. They're We're big animal guys. Animal guys, they're not going anywhere. Yep. Live for- All right, brother Stu. We'll we'll call this the last one. It's a lighthearted one. Would you rather eat a spoonful of wasabi or a spoonful of extremely spicy Louisiana hot sauce? Both, spi- uh, both spicy, but a different kind of spicy. Wasabi, because it, it, uh, was, I've eaten a shit ton of wasabi intentionally and accidentally. And, uh, it goes away after a couple seconds. Yeah. So. It's intense, though. Like when you don't know it's about to hit. Yeah. Once you breathe fire through your nose and you start coughing a little bit, you're fine. Yep. Yeah. Depending on how hot that hot sauce is, that thing will linger. You ever done the? Uh, you ever watch Hot Ones? Um, I've heard of it. Isn't it a oh, wing okay. wing show or a sauce show? Or yeah, it's a it's on. Um, I forgot what show it's on, and I forgot actually <laughs> the guy who um, does the. But it's called hot, hot stuff. Ones. Hot ones. Hot ones. Yeah, it's a a show about hot wings and even hotter questions. <laughs> I think is what they call it. Either way, you they get all these stars or different influencing people, and they get on the show and they eat a uh, different level of hot sauce on wings, and you have to ask, you have to answer and ask questions. Oh uh, yes, I have seen. I have seen an episode. It's a big show, and uh, you just have to keep talking and not. That's hilarious. Up. Yeah, me and my buddies, uh, like Colin Causey and a couple other – Jordan Wheelis and Griffin, like a couple other guys that you know, uh, we got together and we did the hot Wing ones. night like that? Yeah, we did a wing night and we got all of the uh, sauces from the show and did it. God. Good sauces? Uh, yeah, a couple of them. I mean, I loved it. Great experience, but I also hated it because – Hot. Uh, it was hot, to say the least, and I was on the shitter for yep three days. So yep, a little but, too, a little too much shine. Don't recommend. Don't try this at home, kids. Don't try it at home, kids. You know, you know that's protocol. Yeah, protocol. Don't do it. Big, 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 big. Stuart Morris the third. The third. Peter, 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 pumpkin eater, ham, planet, the man himself. Junior. Junior. That's right. You are you are a junior. I am a junior. I gotta put the the two by my name. Is that gangster? I know you do the three. But is yeah. doing the two, I don't know, is that pushing it? Nah, numerals only. Wait, what? <laughs> numerals only. Okay. 
Roman numerals. Yeah, I mean, the Romans. The Romans, I mean, it's the Romans. It's the original language. Yeah. Kind. Kind. Uh, yeah. Uh, there, it, it is. <laughs> Latin, or not, not Roman, sorry. Latin. Latin? Yeah. Latin. Yeah, yeah. Brother, it took yeah. Latin for three years. Did you know that? Do you remember any of it? A little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's what they all say. A little bit, a little bit. Tell me something in Latin, Peter. Um, lupus means wolf. Why? I am not surprised that you, the only thing you remember is... That's not the, I mean, that's not the only thing, but that's all I got for you right now. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next Peter edition. Of- yeah, I don't. I've, I've got a Latin course right now. You can get it on on uh, PeterHamLatinCourse.com, and um, yeah, it's me teaching a Latin course. A lot of Latin. Yeah. So I I can only give away one word right now because you know the course contains the the good. Just right. stuff, yeah. Right. You don't want to, you know, ruin it for the people that are in your class, huh? Yeah, you know the class, the you know the class, the cl- the class, the, the Latin class, the class you you learn Latin. Yeah, you learn <laughs> you learn Latin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not a course, folks. Not a course, That's- unfortunately. Got to work on. Yet. Okay, well, we got one. We got one student, so actually, we do now have a class. All right, Sue, so you're in. <laughs> I'm first Latin student at Ham University. Peter, just answer me this question. Back to college. <laughs> We're going back to college, Peter. Back to Latin class. What did you take in high school? Uh, Spanish. Oh, senor. The, uh, the <laughs> senor. Uh, yo quiero. No, it, I don't remember much of it. <laughs> I went to Spanish three, and uh, I uh, don't remember too much since you're putting glasses on. I guess I'm going to put some on. I don't even know. Do you add those right there? I think these are Ben's. <laughs> So, so, so my buddy, Eric, tells me that I can't wear these because it just looks like I'm a tan- guy who's going to the tanning tank. Yeah, you know, I've, never anything. I've never, I never have either, but you know. Yeah. I probably should. To me, it just uh, looks like you're. Now that I got safe. these. Does it? Yeah. Still a groovy. Yeah, I'm a fan. All right. We'll let it ride. Let it ride. We'll let it ride. All right, Stu, you want me to throw one more at you? Yeah, throw it. Okay. Big beef stew. Would you rather all electronical devices mysteriously stop working, possibly forever, it says in uh, quotations, or the governments of the world are run by people going through puberty? So I guess what does that mean? That's junior high? <laughs> Uh, hell no not me yeah Yeah, take my phone get rid of it uh, well I don't know take away all electronics so does that mean no power or we have electrical electrical devices yeah I guess it's an electrical device so we'd go back to Benjamin Franklin years. Okay. Well, I, electrical, electrical device makes me think like devices, but 
like phones, TVs, etc. Um, yeah, I if guess. it was, that, yeah, but I guess let's just say just electrical. Like you have no electricity. Like we're using lamp light. Yeah. Like, throw out the light bulbs. Throw it all out. We're we're back into the stone ages, boys. Um, That'd be good. I mean, you know, you and I could go build a log cabin. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'd conf- like- I I'm confident in that. Yeah, yeah. I could, I could out in uh, Wharton, Texas, right? Yeah, back in the sticks in old Wharton County. Ooh. If you don't know Wharton, ladies and gents, get to know it. Mm. Great place. Good location out in the middle. Outside one of a Houston. kind. One of a kind. Great people. <laughs> Good Burger Shack. What's the name of that Good place? Yeah, the Niners. And, oh, uh, we, Niners. Yeah, and we went to that uh, barbecue place too. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. Old school, like a. What was that? Like a trailer park, just with a. It, it was next to one. With just some, <laughs> with just some ribs, that were printed out, like a picture of ribs were printed out onto a piece of paper, like taped onto the wall. But you walk in. <laughs> And it's some of the most delicious food you ever had. Yeah, this is just a little little shack. Lean to shack. I'm surprised they had power. <laughs> they probably didn't. Honestly, no, probably. now that I think about it. Yeah, it was cash only. It, it was. Those are the best places, though, man. Barbecue. Oof. It, it was good. I I'd love to go. That was Hinz's. Hinz's, if I remember correctly, Hinz's barbecue was really good. Um. But so back to the question. So, dude, I don't know if I want the countries of the world being run by preteens that are just learning about their penis and their fucking emotions. It ain't, I, it ain't a good time to be running anything. No, no. Nope. I, I, don't, I don't want that. Just imagine that. That's the age where, you know, it is tough. Dude, imagine, imagine France getting pissed at us because we didn't call them back. Like, Not good. Like, and that those people have control of lethal weapons, like a fucking nuclear weapons. Imagine if you missed the call and to your girlfriend in France, and she got pissed and. Decide to shoot a rocket at you or decide that, you know what? No more trade. No more. No, no, yeah, no more wine, no more cheese, no more Eiffel Tower pictures with sorority girls in front of them. You know, it, <laughs> it can't do it. You really can't. I'd, I'd rather build a log cabin and go without my phone and rough it. Eat some elk. Yeah, eat some elk. Buffalo. Join a wolf pack. How like, about uh, the boon? I'm, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Howl at the moon every full moon. Eat berries from poison. trees. Not the poisonous ones, though. That yeah, shit will kill you. I just adapt. Adapt and overcome. That's what That's what you got to do. You ever seen uh, uh, The Revenant? I have it. Leonardo DiCaprio, Leonardo DiCaprio movie. Got to see. The Reverend. The Revenant. Revenant. Maybe I have seen it. It's been a while, though. Good Sounds bear. familiar. Good bear scenes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That movie. The only, the only movie that Leonardo DiCaprio won an Oscar for. Yeah. Good movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. He played a completely uh, different role from his normal. Yeah, uh, I maybe I think it's the only. It's like his first one that he actually caught an Oscar. I don't know if he's gotten any sense, but first he's a, one. He, he's a beauty. Yeah, man. He uh, he actually slept in a horse carcass for the night. For hours, wow. he slept in the horse carcass in the snow just so he would know what it would be like. That is weird, man. That is... Stings the nostrils. 
Yeah, stings the nostrils, man. That. <sighs> Leonardo, no, all that's why he's up there. One of the greats. That's why they pay him the big bucks, man? The big buckaroos. Love Leonardo. Love Ben Stiller. Love Wolf Ferrell. They're going to be remembered for years and years as like the legends during our our era. Legends. Yeah. Well, brother Stu, speaking of legends, how many times do you think we've said legends tonight? At least 15. 33. 30. 33 legends, 34. That, that's my guess. Mm. <laughs> well, I got to decide who's right. Bro, brother, I'm, I want to know how many times we said brother, but I think we kind of kept that at a minimum. We could have gone for more. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Honestly, I think we're missing some. PJ, PJ's episode might have eclipsed it because every I think sentence started. started and ended with brother. I think I counted 40. 40. You were counting? Or just a, a mental ticker? I, I, a mental ticker. I didn't count. I didn't keep a written tally, but it was a lot. There was one specific sentence that he said, brother, every two words. We love PJ, though. Like, I oh, am. Uh, this is a great, it's a great word to use when you mean it. Yeah. I mean, if you if you mean it to the guys you're with, man, they're your brother. They're your brother. Keep saying it. You know what? It's one of my favorite words, and always will be, because it instills trust. And you know, it's got some it's got some good weight to it. Mm. Hey, hey, brother. You know, mm. even though. Hey, shout out to my mom. She she thinks I say brother a lot which i do so uh funny uh i told i told uh mama morris old joy bells that uh i was doing this love, podcast i love and mama morris great lady she even said hey tell brother i said hi <laughs> this is literally what she said gotta love mama morris mama morris mama morris well brother we shall tippeth thine cap and take our bows, take our stance, take our night's watch, as they would say in Game of Thrones, and conclude the episode by saying, I really enjoyed tonight, brother. And I think one thing we should do real quick what is our message to future Stu and Peter? You're on the clock. One year from now, minimum. Huge message to Stu and Peter. Oof. I know I kind of put you on the. Yeah, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Um, take the wins where you get them. Yeah, especially what's going on right now. Just take the little things, man. Like if you get a win for the day, I can celebrate it, take it, move stack, on to the – Stack little wins on little wins. You shit. Yeah, don't, don't focus on the negative things. Um, then that's a big one. Second thing. Hmm. Keep being a good man. Yeah, always. Be the best man you can be every day. Yeah, uh, don't change. Don't change. Don't let don't let anyone tell you to be something different. I mean, I feel like that's just a regular thing, but uh, that's a stereotypical thing. What do people tell each other? Like, you know, don't let anyone influence you and just be the way you want to be. But on a serious note, especially now, um, do you do what's important to you? And, you know, be yourself. Always be always focus on what matters most. We're kind of doing a communal message. Yeah. What do you think, yeah, Peter? Always, I would say 
always stay focused on what matters most in your life, you know, which when it gets down to the foundation of it, you know, it's your family, your friends, what you're passionate about, Mm -hmm. the people you love, you know, always let those things, always let your mentality be guided through wanting to do good for them and be the best motherfucker you can be. Stay in the gym. And I'm, yeah. Stay in the gym. Stay, stay, in the- stay working hard. That just thinks that that makes me re- think of that Jocko Willink. Uh, oh, Jocko's a, Jocko's the man. Jocko is the man. Jocko's a hero. When you, I will never forget you waking me up at like five in the morning to go to the gym before that Baylor OU football game, Hell and yeah. playing that that uh, uh, song or that recording that he has. It's His called, audio book. Yeah, freedom, like, freedom is discipline. Yeah, get to the gym. Get that, up. That was I. I couldn't stop laughing. But it was so fun. I, I love it. Literally, that. it gets you up. Yeah, it gets you going. If anyone out there is having, you know, trouble with maybe getting fired up, getting some motivation, or, you know, even just simple as get it, getting out of bed in the morning, which is honestly not a simple thing. It's a it's very, tough. very key part of life is when you do that and how you do that. But – if you need to uh, get a little pep in your step, Jocko Willick, look him up. You won't be disappointed. Great guy. Hell of a guy. And just like you, brother, Stu, you're a hell of a guy. And I love you so much, brother. You know, you were my young buck. You always will be. But now we're both strong bulls. Mm. Strong bulls, strong bulls all the way, brother. And we I keep, love you. we 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 shall keep it strong mm. as the years keep passing on by, as we keep zooming through. I appreciate, it, brother. You let me come on your podcast. An honor. You're my old bull, one of my best friends, roommate from college. Continue with. A lot of things. A lot of things. Motivator, influencer, gym enthusiast, fellow meat factory goer. Meat factory veteran. Meat factory, what's your beef? Thank you, Ben Newcomb, for that quote. And love it, brother. I appreciate you having me on here. Well, nothing but good energy all around, as always. Stu's, Stu's one of a kind, ladies and gents, so. We shall ingrain this one in digital history so that we can listen to it for decades and centuries to come. And as we say always when the Hand Planet podcast concludes, if you can do me and Stu a favor and share this podcast with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your grandpa, your grandma, you know, even 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 throw it on Spotify. Grab a grab your favorite liquor drink and take a seat and snuggle up next to your dog and just toss me me and Stu on for the night because you know we think you'll enjoy it. And if you enjoy it half as much as we did, we're doing a good job. So, ladies and gents. As always, you can never overdose on the good vibes. I shall leave leave you with that message. And we shall say so long and salute. Peace.